Reginald here, and good morning. I said I was going to upload more than one of these, and I am a man of my word, though I know Fatrack may have fixed the AMD bug as of this morning. Still, the original purpose was just so we could critique my gameplay and have a look at it uh, for fun. Uh, unfortunately, my attempt at recording and talking at the same time was thwarted by the horrible capture of all of my keyboard strokes. I don't really think it's uh, tolerable, so I won't be uploading that video. Uh, I'll have to record another one with my Iron Helm another day. Uh, have a listen. Damn, I tried. Tried to get to you, buddy. I really did. It was my only priority. I just couldn't make it. So that's no good, obviously. Uh, and a shame, too, because I think it was actually a fairly fun game where I made a fair few number of mistakes, actually, which is the whole point, in my view. Uh, still, we'll just have to enjoy a little bit of the like, gameplay for my second run, and we can comment on that one too. I think I made some mistakes in this game too. I did watch it back one other time. It's relatively short at only 25 minutes, so we kind of careen through. Uh, but I find that while Ogrens get in the way of my gunfire, they tend to make missions fairly easy with their general toughness and uh, useful weaponry as of on the whole. Okay, well, other than the shield, useful weaponry. Shield is, uh... So this, I think... This doesn't happen very often anymore, but I think that gunner managed to stop me from charging. Uh, I think I must have gotten the timing wrong, or the targeting wrong, or something, and caught the initial knockback, like, right at the same time. Normally, you can just kind of charge right through their fire, so you time it right. Uh, but I must have done it wrong. That was a nice headshot on this shooter. He didn't need my help. He was fine. This, I was trying to pull up a melee weapon, and I got stopped by gunfire. Again, a little frustrating start for me, but it's it's not the end of the world or anything. Alright, so we got the first chaos spawn. I shoot it to see how much damage it takes, because I'm kind of familiar at this point. I'm going to play this a little aggressively, just to see how it plays. So, <laughs> yep, you can see me just deciding to eat it there. So the Chaos Spawn is at half health, mostly due to explosions. Uh, there's a Rumbler on the field, and then there's uh, a Gauntlet, and and there was a Grenade Box in that. So I think I managed to hit it hardly at all. <laughs> Everyone's just yelling Flesh Bag. I mean, I guess it's fairly... Uh, Inquisitorial to not give it a real name. A chaos spawn. <laughs> I do love the agitator zealot. He's he's very very 40k zealot. He also has some great characterizations. And um, originally, I, I don't think, and I I should maybe I, I mean not the fat track's gonna listen, but. Uh, I should maybe tell them that they should change his intro voice lines because it doesn't really do him any justice and so a lot of people didn't pick him at first so I just picked him because he was unpopular and sounded kind of bookish which is the kind of character I was going for. Uh, I thought I would make kind of a character fully character that is like uh, since I had made, a, made several others at that point. Let's see. So I'm light attacking where I should be special. And yep, this guy comes out of nowhere and just surprises the heck out of me, but I managed to get lucky and, and like, dodge. That's good. We got to the muti, so I can just get the muti. Perfect. There we go, got the headshot. You know, with those uh, flat guys, you want to get heads, but sometimes they fight it a little hard. I think that's partially because they might have a little hitbox protection from the core that comes up from their chest plate. Um, or it could just be that this game does have hitbox detection. So. I love those new voice lines, man. Again, I really like the melee agitator. Uh, I think he's super fun. Success is measureth in blood. Ours or the enemies, it matters not. So that position, by the way, one sec, where I just grabbed that small plasteel, can also spawn Medicaid boxes, so don't ignore it. Maybe have somebody, like half your team, drop down over there or whatever and see if there's uh, see if there's anything there, because on one of my run-throughs I found a Medicaid right there while I was looking for plasteel. So. <sighs> the 
the thing about Ogrid is that they somehow manage to always dodge directly into my gunfire. I don't know how they do it, man. It's like, I got a clear shot, I'm just gonna pick this guy off and then just over an ass. I try not to be too salty about it, but it does still annoy me. I play with an Ogrid very often. When it's, it's one of the few friends that I still have that play this game. Uh, and wouldst yeah. thou compare thy meager efforts with the likes of Saint Celestine? <laughs> We're in the right place. Join up with one another. Form a group. The next part of your journey is through the bench tub stacks. And staying off an alarm. An apothecarian! Respite for the body! I mean, genuinely, even this section of the map looks awesome. I really like the entry way that we just went through as well. Um, it, it just feels so 40k. It's very aesthetic. I like these little, like, Mechanicus motors. I'm not gonna get to, to kill many big boys, because they're just gonna all explode or get shot by the vet. It's okay. There's plenty of stuff to smack, so I'll have a fun game regardless. So, one of the things I'm not sure about is, I know in Roman Hive there was the, the notion of, like, block radius. And I don't know if there is there is any such concept in Dark Tide. It seems like I can always block behind me. I figured that was a handy way to do damage and knock him over. Someone else kills him before I get there. But, hey, whatever. I did plenty of damage. Maulers are... Maulers and Crushers and stuff like that are some of my favorite enemies to fight because it, it, they're reasonably intimidating, especially in reasonable numbers, and uh, they're just they're just a good time to like hit, and they, they require a little bit out of you. Ragers, um, I don't dislike the way they did Ragers for this game, I think they did them actually fairly well, I think they're fairly threatening, but I don't find them fun, fun to do. melee. Exactly. They're not like horrible looking, I'm not saying they're very negative. But, like I don't get like, oh man, I can't wait to go take on that blob of ragers. It's like I feel that way about taking the maulers. I'm like, man, I can't wait to go rush into that blob of maulers and see if I can get away with this. Which is kind of how I play, you know, obviously at this point the game is relatively easy. I'm no longer sweating my way through. I don't exactly know where I took damage from there. I still don't. And it's not. I think there was probably something... Woo! Lag. Uh, I've noticed this since patch 9, actually, specifically. Whenever fire pops from bombers, I have, like, a 30% chance of just losing all my frames. It wasn't like that, and it wasn't like that even in beta, so I don't, I don't really know. I remember to have heavy taps. I might want to use them. That one I thought I was going to hit the guy with the flak. I didn't. There, I didn't think I was going to get away with another heavy attack, so I did a push attack so that I can stay alive. Uh, being on Zealot, being able to get away with lots of push attacks is nice. Uh, they're quite handy on the chain axe, and they're, they're low stamina cost. So, I mean, I really, I really do like this section of the map. I, I know some people have said they don't like the way the lighting works. I've heard that from some people. Personally, with my settings and the way I, my eyes work, this doesn't bother me in the slightest. Um, but I love... Let's go save our boy. Personally, I think the fact that there's this sort of, like, this maze that adjusts constantly, right? Every time you play it, it's going to lend just a little bit of flavor to every run through on this mission. Certainly more than other missions where there's nothing dynamic about them, right? It's not that it's that different, because all of the all the maze sections look the same, but I actually really hope they do more sort of like airlock modes, where it's obviously a little different and you've got a little bit different view, because it's a really cool little midsection. I mean, that's really fun. So good on them for trying something new. I've been thinking about this a lot lately, which is that the core team that makes the game part of the game 
you know, are their the, the the quality of their work is always really high, right? And they always do such a good job. It can take them a long time, and you know, there's clearly some organizational trouble that they have. Uh, but one thing is obvious, which is how much passion they have for their project, right? And I think they deserve praise for that because that is the part of the game we all unanimously love, right? Everything else around it is the problem. But the game itself is so good, and the way they do it is so good, and so they deserve a lot of praise. I'm gonna heal up here because no sense not. A little late on that shot. I tried though. At least I was participating. <laughs> ah, the flying dogs. Listen, listen, guys. Stop trying to fix the dogs. Just stop. If you're wasting resources on the bug for like the 900th time. They're tolerable. Don't fix me these again either. Actually, please revert me these if you don't mind. They used to be predictable, and now they're like this confusing mess that stops on stairs and does power squats intimidatingly, and you don't know if you should approach or not. Just let them do sharp turns and don't worry about it. Ah, look at that. That was a good shot. I was proud of that one. I was. Pr I'm still proud of that one. I was trying to do a heavy attack there with a charge, and I, I guess I just missed the combo buttons. I didn't hear that, but I didn't hear it this time, so clearly I got warning. Man, I would have thought he would have died by that, uh, but he did not. I love the little detail that the barrels, if you shoot a lot, get hot. That just is great on the auto weapons. Uh, that's awesome. So one of the ways I take on Ragers, the reason why I usually, usually see me doing those push attacks is because it lets me catch their chain uh, on my block, on the block portion. The timing seems to work out pretty well. That was to get some toughness back and try to get towards this set of stairs. Um, and it looks like it worked out for me, so good for me. I'm missing all these headshots. This feels horrible. I'm actually really salty about it. I mean, yes, I'm, I'm helping, but... That. Sorry, bud. Shouldn't let you get slapped. Looks like you didn't even take damage, so you're fine. I was fairly surprised he lived, but I realized I did a light instead of a heavy. This is a lot more shooters than I wanted to take on. Uh, so, let me hit this. I thought I had a rev there, so I was surprised that he was alive, but he died eventually. I just had to hit him enough. No big deal. This is a lot of Reapers and enemies. Let's chuck the grenade into that. I'm sure we could take it on without using a grenade, but uh, I would rather not. Yeah, this is unlucky for me. I, there's too much here for me to try and swing into that red attack, but you know, it happens. We're just gonna... Man, look at this in all these blocks. <laughs> We're gonna just go ahead and chop our way through. Unlike the Lawbringer, the... Agrippina, and I didn't know I didn't have a slug loaded, because I usually run around with one. Uh, but the Agrippina just... <laughs> I discovered I had an ammo crate. Uh, the Agrippina doesn't have the ability to stagger anything with just a one shot, really. You need, this, you need two. And I like the Agrippina, but it's definitely not enough to stagger Reapers and things like that. So it has some disadvantages over the Lawbringer uh, for that reason. I did say I waste ammo sometimes. That was very nice. Good little headshot there. Just a body shot. It's fine. Um, with the stats I have on the Synchrocanaut, which is... Uh, I believe it's basically the same as my Lawbringer, but better. Uh, I think it's unarmored 20% instead of 25, which is a bit sad. And then it's 25% uh, flat. And it, I can just one-shot those things. So that little charge was good because it took me around the corner from everything else in the patrol. And obviously these patrols are fairly dangerous with stalkers. They tend to shoot you in melee and uh, they usually have shotgunners around, so it was, it was wise of me to do that. It wasn't intentional, but once I saw where I was, I was like, oh, this is good. I'm going to just stay here. <laughs> this was a waste, 
but I just wanted to hit him. I'm sure the Ogryn could have killed one Stalker by himself. That was also a waste. I told you I wasted ammo, but come on. I blew his head off. It was pretty cool, right? What's the point of playing? It's not fun. I haven't seen <laughs> haven't seen a hand latch on the chain axe in quite a while, uh, but that is what that looks like. It is something that happens, and it's like, oh man, that sucks. It's not even an arm latch. It's like there's a hitbox on the hand. So I like how those guys didn't notice me sawing that other guy's hand off. Uh, that was my revenge for the uh, hitting the hand. Chromaticus clearance. I think that's what that says. <laughs> that was some uh, latency right there. Uh, my shots are reversed. I realized nobody's helping with this guy, so let me take care of it. Uh, let's give this fine since it was all on toughness. If you're new to damnation, it's just a. I'll tell you about that. If someone else is helping that guy. I mean, he was, took a stab to the kidneys. That feels bad. I probably could have handled that by dodging better or maybe just like doing an attack. I decide here that um, I have toughness and health and a charge, so I'm going to run in there. That rep was actually for heavy targets, but I discovered all these guys and they aggressed. I was going to try to push here because we were just standing there shooting and that's boring. I'm a zealot after all. It's kind of my job to aggress. That was for toughness and aggression. I knew there wasn't much over here, or at least I guessed there wasn't. I'm using lights here because I want to keep them distracted. I know there's other people working on them, right? And I distracted, I mean, they, it does stagger them. Uh, that, that was a bummer. He, like, jumped out from behind the shield. I feel like I had dodged, but I still took the hit. Like, that, that's a bummer. That was, a, that was an error. You can see. So I believe I tried to push back there. Uh, push it there, but he just sort of ran up behind, and so he was out of the race to push when I started to push, and then he just sort of ran up and hit me right away. This I would have been safe in. So the chain axe, unlike the chain sword, has good stagger. It takes only one tick to start the stagger, and then the stagger is really high. So you can, I mean, a swinging crusher will just stop and complain about being sawed at. So you can you can definitely get away with that. Uh, I might have, if he didn't charge, I might have taken some damage from one of these guys, but no. Here again, I'm using light attacks in order to not commit. Because uh, there's so many flat guys like running up actively, I don't want to accidentally uh, take damage here. So I know the light attack will do fine uh, damage and will help since they have that shred. It's on the second tick, and I've got help from the Ogrins, so I figured it would be fine. Oh, oh, man, that, even to my eyes now, that looked like it was on target. Uh, what I was going to say earlier is if you're new to Dark Tide's damnation difficulty, you want to learn, like, to play off your toughness. Like, that's really, really critical. If you have 100% toughness, it's 100% toughness regardless of how many toughness periods you have, right? 100% toughness, you'll take zero damage on the first melee hit. After that, you have to worry about taking chip damage until your toughness breaks, and you take full melee damage. So, you may already know that, but you may not be thinking to yourself that you play off your toughness even in melee. When you're at range, of course, of course you're going to play off your toughness. If your toughness breaks, you're going to duck behind cover, and you're going to heal. Everyone knows that. And and just pay attention to it. That's one of them. And, and do lots of dodges. That's how you stay out of trouble, right? But that was good. Found this guy. Found this guy. But for uh, melee, you also kind of want to play off your toughness. Like you can keep fighting even if your toughness has taken some damage. But you want to make sure that your, tr your your goal is to avoid taking any additional damage until your toughness regenerates on your melee class, right? And then you have a one-hit buffer that you can eat something on, uh, and and that's really, that's really how you play that. So. Uh, it works for Ogren too. Yeah, he's great toughness for generation as well, so um, just keep that in mind. That's kind of like the key trick. Uh, you're going to do dodges, blocks, block pushes, push it, push attacks, stuff like that. Oh, so many needies. <laughs> All 
Alright, I got one. They helped the other ones. I certainly didn't do one, but yeah, that was... The way they came out was really fun to look at. going up here to start first of all because I remember stuff coming down at us and I just wanted to check and see what, what the location is like. I was deciding whether or not I wanted Medicaid. I often pass on Medicaid because I just, you know, I've got my, my little self-heal ability. Uh, I, I actually run Holy Revenant. Uh, I know. You, we, we can talk about why I run it another day. I know it's not as good as other options. It's just a preference thing. Uh, but I also have my ability just to choose not to die every 90 seconds, and so I'm like, well, you know, maybe I'll just not die uh, instead of instead of healing. And so I will pass Medicaid often in favor of other players, but I thought I heard a special. That's why I'm walking around like that, like looking around, trying to see what I, what I heard. See the slap! Watch him flail! I'm gonna get these guys so that they don't kill the vet. So I really screwed that up. Uh, you know, to forgive my camera for you, I was annoyed. <laughs> what sometimes happens while I'm using the chain axe is normally I'll hit like one after another, and that will stagger them all, right? I, I've talked about that in my video. Sometimes the game hits a different target than I expected, and then when I go to hit the next one, I'll get slapped. Purely by accident there, but I was glad. Save the save the vet from getting past, so good for us. I mean, there's nothing too complicated going on there. I used a, a push and attack to try and make space. I'm mean, like, I have not helped at all other than killing things. Can I please uh, assist with the data hall? Skiv does most of the work here, and thanks to him. Ends up on. I thought I heard it right next to me, but no. So I used the uh, Agrippina shotgun to knock the dog off. That's all fine. I had that one toughness, so no big deal to take that hit. Hit the wrong target on the charge. I did a few of that, of that today, and I don't know if that was just the latency I was having during this mission or what. It, it definitely didn't feel good. Yep, see, once again, latency. I was trying to use melee, uh, but the swap didn't go out. This happened a lot more in this game than in my other game, so I'm thinking it was just latency related. You know, the server was further away or whatever. Feels bad. I'm gonna go ahead and help you over here since he's in it, and then the sooner I get him out of it, the sooner we can move on. Uh, I don't think I've helped this objective hardly at all. Um, I did actually help this objective on the other mission I played. Uh, but some of the players really get the mission done. And then I guess it's fine because I'm just over here buried in enemies. As long as they're not dealing with all these enemies, then I guess it's fine, right? Better if I was helping. Don't get me wrong. I make it a general rule to help. You can see I'm just doing a, a push block spam. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm so surrounded. Um, I could instead choose to back towards a wall to give myself extra defense. And thanks for the help there, Ogren Man. I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> I do, I genuinely enjoy when an Ogre just blows stuff up directly in front of you. And you're like, oh, it's gone now, I guess. So I use Punishment, and so you can start to see, um, because it gives you Uninterruptible, and so I like that, uh, since I'm not using the other talents that can make you Uninterruptible, right? Uh, but Punishment's upside is it really knocks things over, but once it gets going it's actually quite funny how the Chain Axe sort of like sends things into the floor really aggressively. I think that's fun, personally, yeah, I really do. That was... Uh, just the worst set of dodges. I don't know what I was doing there. I don't know. I can't tell. I know I didn't, like, lag out. I think maybe I saw him sort of, like, go to the right and then go to the left. I don't know. 
Yep, some damage. I think he got charged. Yeah. No, no such luck getting to him here either. I swung too early though, that was totally on me. That was not server latency, I just I just screwed up. Yeah, that shotgun will last. Oh, that did not feel good. Shotgunners are not that dangerous, but they still definitely slap, you know? Like, they'll really break your toughness, and that can be dangerous in a messy situation. Monies! Oh! So I've noticed something. I, I used to hear people complain, and maybe people will stop complaining about this, I don't know, but personally I play with someone who uses the Rumbler a lot. I've noticed that the Rumbler actually does pretty good AoE damage, and so tightly packed groups of enemies really do die by the bushel full to that thing, even though I know it sends some of them flying. It's, uh, it's quite handy. My friend makes short work on a lot of enemies with that thing. So, get off my elevator. It's really good up against patrols. If you ever drop a rumbler around into a patrol, you can just get rid of all of the shooters. It's like in two shots. It's wild. Um, Alright, well, that's not bad. Um, I did almost as much damage as the Bully Butcher uh, over and, and a similar number of kills, so I think that's fairly favorable to the Chain Axe. It's, you know, it's fine. Um, I only took 350 damage. I didn't take as little as Skiv, but I think he was running camo, so, you know, fair enough. And I barely shot anything, which was probably wise of me, because, after all, uh, we had a vet and all these explosives going off all the time, so it was like, I'll just shoot whatever's important and keep smailing stuff. All right, well, uh, that was the whole recording. I hope you enjoyed sort of my commentary, or any commentary on it. I don't know, maybe I'll try to focus more on commenting on the actual action of the game rather than just pontificating wildly, but we'll see. Um, I do appreciate you visiting. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week, and I will be continuing to work on the review, which will be the next thing I publish. And then I'll go back to some tutorial stuff, I think, because the tutorials are uh, definitely still fun. I want to do one on the Heavy Sword. I want to do one on the Eviscerator normally, and then I want to talk about chain weapons more broadly. So that's kind of on my docket. Bye-bye.